Last week, we built these three-way active speakers. This week, I'm gonna show you how I was able to quickly and easily design a crossover and EQ for these using the fully integrated DSP amplifier by Acoustis. I'll also show you how I integrated and EQ'd this passive 15 inch subwoofer along with the help of my Crown XLS to make one of the best sounding music focused systems I've heard in a long time. Before we talk crossovers, let me introduce you to the project that we're working with today. Covering our lower octaves will be the Hi-Vi L6 4R 6 inch Kevlar woofer. This is used in the popular Hi-Vi 3.1 kit. I really like its output and extension in this half a cubic foot size enclosure. Our half a cubic foot enclosure gives us an F3 in the 55 hertz range and a coic. With our speakers in room, we will be able to get a bit lower than this, but I'm going to leave that up to a subwoofer. For our mid-range and tweeter, we'll be using the Tangban W62313. This is a coaxial design using a bamboo fiber mid-range and a magnesium aluminum inverted dome tweeter. This driver uses this really flat surround, which gives the driver an interesting look and helps mitigate diffraction. My goals for this build were extension down to 40 or 50 hertz, wide and even dispersion, and low distortion. One quirk about this because it's such a compact design is that our speaker terminations on the back of the amplifier are going to be through Phoenix connectors. Before actually getting my hands on it, I thought this would be a little bit annoying um, because I'm not a huge fan of the Phoenix connectors, but it seems pretty obvious that there's no way to get 12 binding posts on the back of something so compact. While we're on the subject of the terminals, let's talk about speaker wire really quickly. So I'm extremely cheap. So what I've done here is some Amazon Basics 16 gauge wire with a little bit of wire dressing and some heat shrink. These things look really good. No one's gonna complain about these. They hide really well and they look really professional despite their very low price. Before we can measure, we'll need to get connected to the AC650. Our options are Bluetooth, coaxial, optical, or USB. I've used both Bluetooth and USB for measurements with really good results. For convenience sake, I actually do enjoy using Bluetooth for taking measurements with this as it frees me up from using long cable runs. For desktop uses, it does have these really nice knobs on the front for volume control, EQ, and input selection, but I'm gonna be controlling everything through the Acoustis app. The app controls everything over a Wi-Fi connection and the app is available for Android, iOS, and macOS. Let's take some measurements with the AC650 to see what our drivers are doing. We'll start by measuring our tweeter. I'm going to set the volume very low because we have no filters on here to protect our tweeter and then I'm gonna gradually increase that to a decent reference level. Once we have our measurements, we can apply some filters to see how our driver responds. Here's our tweeter with a first order Butterworth and then a 48 dB per octave eighth order Butterworth. Here is a second order, Linkwitz Riley, and here is an eighth order, Linkwitz Riley. We can see that the Acoustis is able to give us a nice smooth or steep roll off for whatever our goals are. For each driver, we can also apply a 15 band EQ in and out of the pass band to give us a nice smooth response. We can center the EQ anywhere we like and then make a wide adjustment using a very low Q or a high Q adjustment for very narrow adjustments. We can cut or boost by 12 dB Here's the tweeter's response with an EQ that I've quickly set. Leaving the volume at the exact same level, let's move on to our mid-range driver. We can see that we get a decent response from our mid-range driver, and this is nothing that EQ can't help flatten out. Now, the use of DSP is going to be extremely helpful in our mid-range. This is because we need both a low-pass and high-pass filter. With passive components, designing both a low-pass and high-pass filter for a mid-range can be extremely tricky. Maintaining a smooth response in the pass band, keeping our filters working together, and keeping impedance up is no simple feat. With the AC650, however, this is made really simple. We can use our 15 band EQ to smooth out the response, apply filters where we choose, and we don't have to worry about the impedance. Last up, we'll measure our woofer. We can see that we have a decent response up to about 200 hertz if you ignore the floor bounce, and then we can see that the baffle step starts to occur around 300 hertz. We'll be crossing over before the baffle step, so we're not really concerned with that right now, but let's apply some broad filters and see what we can do to our woofer. Let's start with this first order Butterworth at 300 hertz, and we can see the response change in real time. Next, let's try a third order, 18 dB per octave, and we can see the increase in attenuation. Now that we have the response of all three drivers, our next step is going to be to attenuate our tweeter and mid-range to bring them down in line with our less efficient woofer. This is made really simple with the gain feature in the app. With our woofer's response on screen, we can easily lower the mid and tweeter's response to get in line with the amplitude of our woofer. Now, at this point, you may think we are ready to start designing some filters, but we've actually got one more crucial step in order to get this right. 
Because our drivers are located at different points on the front baffle, the sound waves that emanate are actually going to arrive at our ear at different points in time. This physical spacing difference is referred to as the Z offset. To fix this, we can actually use the delay function in the app to delay the signal to our mid and tweeter so that they arrive in phase with our woofer. If you're already familiar with passive crossover design, this is probably going to be straightforward, but if not, I'm going to link to some videos that are going to teach you how to derive your Z offset. With our delay set, we can now begin to work Work on our crossovers. Before selecting crossover points, we would actually want to take a few off-axis measurements to see where our divergence occurs. Taking good off-axis measurements is a very time-consuming and tedious ordeal, so I'm not going to bore you with all of that. Instead, for the purpose of this video, we are going to simply cross these drivers over as low as possible. Doing this will ensure that we get the widest dispersion from each driver respectively. Tangban actually recommends crossing the mid and tweeter over between the 2.5 to 3.5 kilohertz region with second order filters, but because we're actually gonna use really steep filters, we could technically go a little bit lower and still avoid distortion. But for the sake of simplicity, let's actually stick with the 2500 hertz recommended crossover frequency. I'll start by applying a Linkwitz Riley 8th order high pass to the tweeter and a symmetrical low pass to the mid-range. Next, I'll apply an 8th order high pass at 300 hertz to our mid-range. And lastly, I'll apply an 8th order low pass to our woofer. Now, when we measure our frequency response, we can actually see that we have these large nulls in the crossover region. To get our drivers back in phase, we'll need to reverse the polarity at our crossover points. To simplify this, we can simply invert the polarity of our mid-range driver. Doing this gives us a nice smooth on-axis response and a really smooth integration across our crossover points. When we move horizontally off-axis, we can see that our crossover points stay in phase and that we get the nice smooth gradual roll-off that we're looking for. Now that we have a really nice on-axis response, we can use the EQ functions to balance our on and off-axis response for the best in-room response. This is largely going to come down to personal listening preferences and priorities. The AC650 gives me the ability to EQ until the end of time. For this reason, we don't have to be married to any particular configuration at this moment. We can use the preset feature here to our advantage by creating different curves for different listening positions, different speaker placements, whether pulled out into the room or close to a wall. So far, we've been looking at the six 50 watt powered channels from the AC650, but it also features two analog outputs and two optical outputs. We can apply filters to these channels just like our Others to create a four-way with a separately powered subwoofer or just to integrate subwoofers like I'm going to be doing today. This is the 15-inch Serwin Vega that I built a while back. I'll run RCA connections out of the AC650 into my Crown XLS. We can use a low-pass filter to integrate the sub with our mains. We can even EQ the low end for lower extension so long as we don't exceed Xmax. With our subwoofer covering our lower octaves, we see that we're getting a really nice linear in-room response. Designing a full range three-way speaker is never an easy task, but I personally feel like the AC650 has made this as easy as is currently possible. Because this amp is fully integrated and handles everything, we don't have a stack of amplifiers and a mess of cables to contend with. So long as the 50 watts per channel suits your build goals, I would happily recommend the AC650 to anyone looking to either get started in DSP or to clean up their existing configuration. I've listened to the AC650 now through all of the inputs uh, for a few weeks and there's nothing that stands out about the sound signature to me. It's overall just really clean and neutral. I don't feel that it's coloring the sound in any particular way. For my fairly large listening space, it has had more than adequate power to drive these to reference levels, and I've not been able to comfortably drive them to maximum volume yet. I am going to leave a link to the AC650 down in the description. As usual, I was not paid for this review, and there are no affiliate links here. I will not benefit from this in any way if you decide to make a purchase. Leave a comment if you've got any questions about this project or others. I've got some really exciting passive builds coming up very soon that you don't want to miss, so go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching this far, and I will see you in the next one.